In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve radical equations algebraically and also graphically. So let's take a look at the first example here. So we have the square root of x plus 7 equals to 3, and the question is to determine the roots algebraically. So we're going to take and I'm going to rewrite the question down here, and I have root x plus 7 equals to 3. So to get rid of the radical symbol, because it's a square root, I'm going to square both sides. And I get x plus 7 equal to 9. And finally, I move the 7 by subtracting 7 on both sides. So x equals 2. All right, now it also says to identify any restrictions on the variable. So we take a look at the inside of where the radical is. So that would be x plus 7. And I know that I can only square root positive numbers, so that means that x plus 7 must be greater or equal to 0, which means that x has to be greater or equal to negative 7. Now let's compare this graphically. So I have root x plus 7 equals to 3. And before I graph, what I want to do is to move all the numbers to one side. So I have root x plus 7 minus 3, and that equals 0. So um, from my equation here, I can see that my starting point, uh, I'm going to use negative 7 because that gives me 0. And then my y value would then be negative 3. So x and y. So I'm going to say, now the reason I'm doing this actually is instead of saying that it equals 0, you can also consider this to equal f of x. Okay. So when I plug in x is negative 7, I get a y value of negative 3. Now what's really useful here is to look at look back at this first part where I said the restriction was x was greater or equal to negative 7. So since it's greater or equal to negative 7, I need to choose values that are bigger or equal to negative 7. Now there's a nice pattern when we are looking at the values of what to choose. Um, because we want perfect squares inside the radical symbol, the perfect squares are actually a difference of 1. So if I add 1, I'm going to get negative 6. If I add 3, I'm going to get negative 3. And then if I add 5, I actually get positive 2. And you can check to see why this is. So when you add the odd numbers, you'll consecutive odd numbers, you'll get actually perfect squares inside. But that only works if the x doesn't have a stretch applied to it. So when I plug in negative 6, I'm going to get negative 2. I plug in negative 3 plus 7, so it's 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Minus 3 is negative 1. Plug in 2, I get 9. Root 9 minus 3 is going to be 0. So let's graph these four points. So I have negative 7, negative 3, negative 6, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, and 2, and 0. So when I graph these four points and I connect them, now remember that x has to be greater than negative 7, so make sure that you start at the negative 7, negative 3 point, and then you're going to graph to your right. So the graph goes this way. So looking at my graph, I can see that my x-intercept is right here at x equal to positive 2, which coincides with my root, which was x equals 2. So we can notice that the roots of the radical equation are equal to the x-intercepts of the graph of the corresponding radical function. So the following one you can try on your own. So let's take a look at some other ones that are a little bit maybe more difficult. So I have this one here. Um, and this title here says solving a radical equation involving an extraneous solution. So when solving by graphing, we can isolate the function on one side and find the x-intercepts. Uh, like we did above, or actually we can use a system of two equations and find the intersection. Points of the two graphs. So either way, uh, you have to remember that the solutions are always the x values. It's not a point 
um, we're just using the graph to find our x values because remember in the equation, if you look at the, this equation, for example, there are no y values. So we're just using the graph to help us find the x values. You can graph this um, as like we did before, but this one would be hard to graph because it has two x values and we move it all to one side, we're gonna have root x plus two minus x plus four. And we've never really encountered something where we can graph like that. So therefore what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna graph this one separately. Now let's actually check graphically and then we're going to, um, we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna solve graphic, sorry, solve algebraically first and then we'll check it graphically. So let's take a look at the algebraic solution first. Okay, so I have root x plus two equal to x minus four. So to get rid of the square root, I'm going to square both sides. And when I do that, I get x plus two on the left. And remember on the right side, I actually have x minus four and x minus four. That's what the squared means. So when I expand this, I'm gonna get x squared minus eight x plus 16. Let's move all the terms to one side. So I get x squared minus nine x plus 14. And now we're gonna solve for x. And I can see that this one is factorable. So I'm gonna open up two brackets. And the two numbers that multiply to 14 add to negative nine are negative seven and negative two. So it seems like x is seven and two. So let's take a look at this question graphically. Now, how do we graph this when there are two parts, I guess you can say. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see where the x root x plus two equals to x minus four. In other words, graphically, we're gonna see where these two left side and the right side, where do they intersect? So I can consider this y1 to be x plus two. And then I'll say that my y two is equal to x minus four. Now important, if we are using a table of values, um, it's nice to know where to start. So if I look at the expression inside the radical, it's x plus two, and I know that has to be greater than zero since I can only square root positive numbers. So x is greater or equal to negative two. So when I do my table of values, I'm going to start at negative 2, and when I plug in negative 2, I get 0. So we're going to do that um, little trick where we add 1, 3, and 5. So when I do that, I get negative 1, positive 2, and 7. Okay. Um, so I'm adding 1, 3, and 5 consecutive numbers. Um, then when I plug these in, I get 1, 2, so root 4 is 2, 7 plus 2 is 9, root 9 is 3. Okay, so I'm going to graph this, these four points. I get negative 2, 0, negative 1, positive 1, 2, 2, and 7, 3. Okay, now as we graph the line, I don't really need to do much. Actually, I'm going to actually graph this a little bit nicer. So I'm going to graph this so it connects. There we go. So to graph the line, I don't need anything fancy. I'm just going to use my slope and my y-intercept. So my y-intercept is negative 4, and it has a slope of 1. So that means that it's going to hit like this. So when I graph, I'm going to get a line that looks like this. Oh, I'm just a little bit off, so I'm going to redo that. Okay, and so I can see that from my graph, my intersection point is equal to seven and three. So therefore, my x value, because remember we're only looking for x, is seven. Now that doesn't make sense, because why is it algebraically I get seven and two, but when I graph the equations, I actually only get x's equal to seven. So you know what, let's do a check. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check seven, I'm gonna plug it into my original question to see if the left side equals the right side. So my check, I'm gonna take root seven plus two equals to seven minus four. So we have the square root 
of 9 equals to 3. And yes, 3 does equal to 3. So that's great. Let's check 2. So 2 plus 2 is equal to 2 minus 4. On the left side, I get root 4. On the right side, I get negative 2. Root 4 is 2. And 2 does not equal negative 2. So therefore, we can see by checking my solution, um, 2 does not work. So therefore, what we say is that x equal to negative 2. Oh, sorry, not negative 2. x equals to positive 2 is what we call an extraneous root. Think of it as being an extra answer that we don't need. So extraneous. So my actually my only answer um, in this case will be that x is equal to 7. All right, let's try one more just to show you what this is like. Um, so this one I'm only going to do this algebraically and then we'll check algebraically as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'm going to take my question. I'm going to square both sides. So I have 18 minus 2x squared. And remember, when I square the right side, I'm going to have x plus 1 and another x plus 1. So I get 18 minus 2x squared equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Move everything to one side, and I get 3x squared plus 2x minus 17. Now, this one, unfortunately, is not factorable, so I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. So I get negative 2 plus or minus. This will be all square root b, so b is 2 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 17, all divided by 2 times 3. So I'm going to simplify my inside of my radical, and I find that I get 208, all divided by 6. So x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus. I'm going to simplify the radical, and I can see that 16 times 13, after trying some numbers, um, gives me 208, so that gives me 4 root 13, and that will be all over 6. All right, so finally now, I can see that um, all of these numbers here, 2, 4, and 6, are all divisible by 2. So I'm going to divide them all by 2 to get negative 1 plus or minus 2 root 13 all over 6. Now, when I plug both of these answers, the negative 1 plus the 2 root 13 divided by 6, and also the negative 1 minus 2 root 13 divided by 6. I can see that on my right side, this here, if I plug in the negative, anything that's bigger than the negative 1 plus 1, I'm going to get a negative on the right side. And I know that I, when I square root the left side here, I'm not going to be able to get a negative number. So that means that the negative 1 minus 2 root 13 is extraneous. So I'm going to say that here. So that's going to be extraneous. So therefore, my only solution is going to be the positive one. And you can actually check this. Um, you can type it into your calculator um, and see that when you plug it in for x, do you actually indeed get the left side equaling the right side? And you will.